So have you ever thought about how we go around and we say stuff all the time, but maybe we never really think about exactly what the stuff we say really means, like what the words mean. So phrases like self-consciousness. If you're self-conscious, we always associate that with being nervous in crowds or not happy with the way you look. We attach this negativity to it where it really, especially in things like music and any kind of performance in front of people where you want to have, where you want to present yourself in a particular way, it has a pragmatic attribute to it. So, what I mean is if you are self-conscious and you are conscious of self or aware of yourself, what you look like, what you sound like, those sorts of things. And so, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can figure out what you actually look and sound like to other people so that you can look and sound better. So the crux of this whole idea is that we don't always sound exactly like we think we sound. Just like, uh, you know, guitar faces and things of that sort don't really happen on purpose. Or maybe they do. It depends on which way you want to go from it. But either way, you need to know what those things look and sound like. So, here are some ways that you can understand what you actually sound like versus what you think you sound like. This is a common uh, thing that you might hear in sports, feel versus real. Like, it feels like this is the right thing to do, but in reality, you know, that may be a terrible looking jump shot, or a horrible looking football throw, or a totally ineffective golf swing, even though it feels comfortable, and thereby you equate that to good. So, on to the first thing. The first thing is to listen to what you are playing. Like, really listen. Uh, we might get guitar heavy in this because I see a lot of guitar players really go wrong, mainly because they get to practice in isolation and play in isolation quite a bit more than, say, people with band instruments where they have somebody sort of directing the thing. Anyway, listen while you practice. Listen to what you're playing. What I mean by that is that it may feel good to just bend notes until the little string touches the big string. But that might not make any sort of audible sense. It may not make any musical sense. It may just feel good. So what you need to do is learn what that actually sounds like. Listen to it. Is that bend in tune? Is that bend to a note that I actually want to play? Things like that. Number two, record yourself. Now, don't come to me with, I don't have money to record, I don't have a studio, I don't have a microphone, da da da. You're probably watching this video on your phone. Our phones have gotten good. Our phones have video cameras and good microphones that pretty honestly pick up, honestly pick up everything that happened in the room at the time of the recording. So, you can kill two birds with one stone. If you're practicing guitar, guitar solos, Record them on your phone at a volume that your phone mic doesn't clip out and sound weird. So turn everything down. Video it. So now you can see, do I look ridiculous when I concentrate? Because you don't want to be doing that in public, maybe. You may not care. But it's another thing that you can be practicing. Because otherwise you're wasting your time. If you're not listening and you're not finding a way to listen, then what are you practicing? You're practicing feelings. And last I checked, audio is not really a calisthenic sort of discipline. So you can record yourself on your phone, record pieces of stuff. Uh, if you're a singer, this is a big one with singers, you can listen to a line on your phone and then pull up, a you pull up your camera, record a bit of a video of just the one line, listen back, A, B it. Can Compared to the one that you're trying to get and the one that you want and the one that you're recording and see what needs to change and work through a process to get better and to, th to say to yourself when I do this when something feels like this it sounds 
like that. The third thing, create a focus group. So get some people together that you know that will listen to you and say, I don't really like when you do that. That sounds off. That sounds weird. Now, a thing that you're going to have a problem with with this is people's resolution of understanding. They're not going to give very clear instruction to what it is that they would like you to change or what they think you should change. Or they may even be wrong that the thing should even change. Because if all you have to listen is your parents and they don't even like the kind of music you're playing, then they may be like, I don't know, even though you're doing a fine job at it. So you need to be careful with that. However, a good way to do this would be if you take regular lessons. Then use a lesson. Say, say to your instructor, I want you to tell me if this stuff is any good. This is the stuff that we've been working on. This is how I've been performing it. Is there any aspect of this audibly, visually, e even, even if the gear doesn't make sense? Like if the rig that you're bringing for this particular endeavor is n not what it needs to be, then your instructor is likely to be able to suss that out. So there's three things on how to be more self-conscious so you know what you actually sound like. It's a lot easier to do right when you can find what wrong is. Anyway, there's some things to think about. Like and subscribe if you have some of these ideas, some more of these ideas, or uh, if you try anything different than what I listed. Leave them in the comments. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.